and welcome, beloved viewer and listener, to another episode of our wonderful interview series here with contributing authors to the book, You Matter, How Women Reclaiming Their Power Are Changing the World. I'm Sylvia Becker-Hill, your host and founder of Becker-Hill Books and the publisher of You Matter. And today, it's my pleasure and honor to introduce you here today to Afshan Shafi, who has a Bachelor of Honors in English, a postgraduate diploma in journalism for developing countries and a master's from the University of Southern California in broadcast journalism. Afshan, you worked most of your life in international organizations in the field of communication and public affairs for the most exciting projects. It's such an honor to have you here today. Afshan, she wrote the chapter in our book, The Power of Inner Strengths. Welcome, my dear. Thank you for having me, Sylvia. I'm, I'm delighted to be here with you. And with all of my authors, we are jumping right into the core of the book, the theme. We are talking about mattering and power. So tell our beloved viewers and listeners, what does mattering mean to you personally? I think when I think what I realized when working with with all of all the wonderful women involved in this um, multi-author project is that each human being has so many stories. Each of our lives matter and our stories matter. And it's time for some of those stories to be shared because although we might think that these stories um, are very personal because they are very personal, they also have a universal uh, resonance and appeal and need to be shared. So what it means to matter is to make a difference, to make a difference in some small way. To me, that's what it means. Beautiful. Beloved viewer, I hope Afshan can inspire you to start thinking about your own stories and what those stories mean to you and which of those stories might make a difference for someone else. I know that so often we, we think smaller about ourselves, that our stories don't matter and that other people have always these big, much more interesting or dramatic or important stories. And in my experience now with working this wonderful group of authors and others, it's sometimes the tiny daily occurrences and incidences and experiences where the common threats of our humanity are much more tangible than in the big, extraordinary, unusual, uber dramatic story. So beloved viewer and listener, don't discount your stories. And maybe we can all invite you, inspire you, or dare you to start writing them down yourself. When do you, Afshan, feel truly powerful? Uh, such a difficult question. I think um, if I was to be completely honest, I feel most powerful when um, I produce something, um, mm. whether, whether it's a, a dish, or whether it's a piece of, I don't know, embroidery or knitting or, or a story, or whether it's completion of a project. Mm -hmm. I think um, I feel powerful when it's done, when it's out there and it's well received. Um, I feel powerful when I feel content and at peace. Um, I think that for me is a sense of power is when you are at inner peace with yourself you know you've done your best you feel good about what you've done and that sense of contentment to me is the soft power for me the oh, sense of soft power. you just said soft power right yes it's, it's so it's beautiful soft power yes yeah because so many people think when they hear the word power of hard power, of power over others, of pushing, fighting, struggling. Sure. And, and that is, and that, indeed, that is power. But I think that's more the abusive power or where there, that power has more potential for abuse. Whereas I'm thinking more of nurturing, strengthening kind of power, which helps build up rather than knock down. So therefore, I call it soft power. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, con concept 
And our book with every chapter, starting with the word, the power of, and then there is something very unique and specific from each author. We are about elevating the whole conversation about power so that people can discover the different faces of power. That mm -hmm. power is not just one and always the same face of itself, that power has so many different faces. Mm -hmm. And I also love that you uh, shared the examples of when we create something, you started, it can be something as simple as a dish. Yes. So again, these things in our everyday life, we do consciously. And you said you are content, you created something. I mean, beloved viewer, listener, remind, remember you, for yourself when you were starting something, you were out to do something and you did it and you fulfilled it. Yes. Can you relate to Afshan and her contentment when it's done, the project? Is it a proposal? Is it an Excel sheet? Is it mm -hmm. whatever it is? And I love that because I share that um, concept for me. It's like the divine spark of being the creator, of doing something. You create a dish or a proposal or a book. <laughs> and here we are. That is so beautiful. So when you, what do you do when you have lower moments, when you don't feel powerful or energy, you, you seek to create something, you go into the kitchen and mm. what do you do? Mm. Do you have any tips? I yes, I remind myself that first of all, there always, there's always a solution to every problem. Mm. And um, sometimes the solution may not be the one that we want. It may not be the one that we visualized as the perfect solution. And it may not be the perfect solution. But when you come to a solution, that in itself gives you a sense of peace. So when I'm feeling down, I, I remind myself of the good things in life. I mean, it's, it's a little cliche. Um, for me, I, I get a lot of strength from other people. I can be walking down a street and the smile from a, a baby who's in a stroller mm. can light, brighten up my day. <laughs> So, um, you know, or the sight of beautiful flowers or, or clouds rolling by. Um, I'm fortunate in that I, I've, I've, I'm living in beautiful parts of the world where there's always beauty around. And I think nature has a lot to offer and, and walks when you go out and you just breathe the air in, you remind yourself of all the things that are still right with the world because there are so many things that are not right with the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I think, um, yeah, you need to center yourself and find some inner peace, whether that's in nature or whether that's in hugging your loved one, or whether that's in, um, baking a dish if you want. <laughs> um, yes, I think you remind yourself of whatever makes you feel warm and fuzzy and happy inside. Because when you're happy inside, then everything else flows much more easily and naturally. Isn't that the truth? Beloved viewer and listener, I hope you are resonating with some of those ideas. Everything Afshan here is sharing, she's sharing it generously, so steal it. <laughs> Go for a walk, connect, reconnect with nature, discover the beauty in your environment, smile at other people, discover the smiles on other people's faces. I mean, especially after the long time of lockdown and the pandemic and the rise of anxieties and depression, smiles can go a long way for all of us. Why do you think, Afshan, our book, You Matter, Why Women Reclaiming Their Power Are Changing the World? Why do you think the book matters? Why is the book important? And why do you want everyone to read it? <laughs> well, I think um, it offers the audience, the reader, you, Sylvia, as our publisher, a glimpse into all our lives, a glimpse into some stories of how each of us, the 20 of us who are part of this project from various parts of the globe, um, have experienced obstacles and how we've overcome them, how we've basically made lemon meringue pie out of the lemons that life has thrown our way or made margaritas, if you like. Um, I think, I think it matters because sometimes when you're down and you feel completely uh, oppressed by an obstacle or by a challenge and you feel stuck, 
it's good to talk to people, right? Um, you get ideas. And sometimes, especially during the pandemic, it isn't always possible to connect in person. But I think our book um, has been a tremendous connector for, mm -hmm. for those of us who are involved in it, but also in, in sharing our stories, we're, we're, we're opening up our personal, very personal stories in the hopes that you might see yourself as a reader in some of those struggles. And you might find some ray of hope in how we've overcome those struggles and moved on with our lives and claimed our lives as our own and tried to mold it into the way we want it rather than the way circumstances were molding it. So um, that's what I hope that people will get out of it. I think it matters because for too long, women's stories have not been told. And the fact is women are amazing. I think if, if anything, we are probably stronger than men, but we have this soft power. So we don't necessarily advertise it from the rooftops, but we have the soft nurturing power, which is actually more sustainable. I'm so sorry, that's the grandbaby claiming her wonderful. power. This is wonderful. It, it elevates here and makes our interview conversation much more lively. And no worries if- That's my granddaughter with her- power exactly let her join us and we are nearly at the finish here for our time just oh, one more question my dear absolutely what was a surprising outcome for you going through this process of a multi-author book it's quite an un, quite unusual it was this whole mix of creativity yes. but also very structured so what surprised you well i think um, one of the things that surprised me is the absolutely creative genius eccentric publisher that we have <laughs> you that's one thing that surprised me and how your you. energy has has somehow propelled us all in a peaceful way to develop this amazing book in such a condensed period of time having said that the other amazing, two other amazing things for me, the unexpected outcomes have been this sisterhood of storytelling that we've, I've developed with all these other amazing, remarkable women who I've met so far, mostly uh, only remotely through, um, through, the, through the internet. Um, we haven't, most of us haven't really met in person still. And I think the sisterhood that developed is, is really um, astonishing. The other thing that for me personally, and, and, and that's, those are my three uh, surprising uh, discoveries or uh, outcomes of this project for me, is that it, it has reminded me that my muse has been asleep and is now reawakened and has so many mm -hmm. stories to share. And um, I mean, I write for a living, right? I, I, I communicate for a living, but these are personal stories. And when I was I was so honored to, to be selected to be one of your authors on this book, one of the writers. When I started writing, one of the most difficult thing was which story or stories do I choose to highlight in this book? But because that muse is now reawakened, she has so many stories that are waiting to be told. So for me, that was a surprising, those are the three most surprising things of this project and I thank you very much for giving me that opportunity you're so welcome and again you make me so happy with everything you say and beloved viewer and listener I hope you can take out some nuggets for yourself you 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 whoever here is watching or listening you have a muse in you as well and whatever you like to call it yeah your creative self your intuition your 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 well of stories we, we all have that and sadly, when we grow up through society, sometimes it's one sentence a teacher says, or it's a, an expression on the face of our mother or father. When we come home from school with an essay, we were proud and we got maybe judged for it or something. Sometimes one painful incident as a child can put a lid on our beautiful creative self and we stop sharing. We stop writing or painting or taking photos or dancing or cooking, whatever your expression of your creative muse is. So yes. I'm so happy for you, Afshan, that you are sensing that she is woken up and now you can't get the lid back onto her. And I don't um... want to. <laughs> but my message to, to the readers and audience, if you'll allow me, Sylvia, is yes. that you matter. 
your stories matter, your life matters. And we would love to hear everyone's stories, right, Sylvia? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Beloved viewer and listener, if you're watching this here before November 12th of 2021, then you can't get the book yet. It comes out on November 12th in the Kindle version. Please help us to gain bestseller status by buying the book on that day. Three weeks later, you can also buy the print version, hardcover and softcover. And for years to come, you will around the world be able to buy the book through Amazon. And... We have the whole series here. You can meet all the other authors as well here on my YouTube channel. I'm so grateful for your attention and time you spend here today with Afshan Shafi and me, Sylvia Becker-Hill. And we are looking forward to hear from you. You can leave comments. You can reach out to all of us on social media because we are all active to get the message out how much you, you, you truly matter. Thank you, Afshan, for your time showing up here today. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.